Freezing rain, it's the worst, but did you know that it's a self-limiting process, which means eventually it will shut itself off without a supply of cold air? Let me explain. All right, so we gotta go back to eighth grade science, or maybe ninth grade, depending on when you took it, but we are talking about the latent heat diffusion. What is that? Remember, to heat things up or cool things down, you either add heat or you remove heat. Think about boiling water. How do you boil water on the stove? You add heat to it. Well, to cool things down to freezing, you take a water droplet, you must remove the heat from that water droplet. So over here, you see on my left, we've got a water droplet. So when the temperature is below freezing, we remove heat from that water droplet, as you can see on the diagram. So that heat escapes, it goes away from this, this turns to an ice cube, and where does that heat go? Well, the heat's gotta go somewhere. It goes into the surrounding air. So what happens is more of these raindrops begin to freeze and we remove more heat. Eventually, the air around us will warm above the freezing point, unless in big freezing rain events or ice storms, we have a constant supply of cold air to replenish and keep things cold. So this is why freezing rain is a self-limiting process. Oh, by the way, this is also why farmers spray their crops with water during a freeze. It's not to insulate the crops. I think a lot of folks think that that's what's going on. What's actually happening is they're using this process of freezing water to remove heat from the water, put it in the plant and the surrounding air to keep things just close enough to above freezing so that the plants aren't damaged.